Let's take a look at an array. Here's an array. And let's assume that I've got some things in my array, some numbers. It's pretty simple. If I want to add a new number to my array, let's say I'm going to add it at the end. I'm going to add 25. What's the complexity of add last on an array? You guys have never thought about this, have you? See, data structures. So let's assume that I have something that tells me how big the array is. I've got five things in my array. So I'm going to go to the sixth element. I know, for example, these are integers. So they're four bytes. So I can just explicitly go to the right place, right? Because I know how many things are there. And I want to add 30. What's the complexity of adding something to the end of the array? It's big O of 1. It's constant time, OK? Because I know I've got six things in my array, so I'm going to add something in the seventh bucket. Here it is, 35, OK? So add last in an array is constant time, big O of 1. Perfect. What about removing something from an array? I want to remove the last element in my array. Here it is. I got seven things in my array. I'm going to remove it. I've just done it. What's the complexity of remove last? Here's my 30. It's the sixth element in my array. I'm just going to remove it. We're done. It's big O of 1. Okay. So in an array, in a standard array, adding and removing from the end of the array is constant time. Now, what about adding and removing at the beginning of the array? Okay. So now I've got some things in my array, and I want to add something at the beginning of the array. How am I going to do it? The only way I can do this, not the only way, yeah, the only way I can do this is I've got to take this 25 and move it over and take the 20 and move it over and take the 15 and move it over and make the 10 and move it over and then take the 5 and move it over and then finally I can add something at the beginning of my array okay and so what's the complexity of that it's big o of n okay because I have to move everything over to make space to add to the beginning of the array. Similarly, if I want to take away something from the beginning of the array, then I have to take that thing away, and now I've got space here. And I can't have space at the beginning of my array, so I have to take the 5 and move it over. I have to take the 10 and move it over. I have to take the 15 and move it over. I have to take the 20 and move it over. I have to take the 25 and move it over. Okay? So remove first is also big O of n. Okay? So the complexity of removing and adding to the beginning of an array is big O of n. The fundamental difference is really important that you get the difference between an array and a linked list here, OK? Now, this assumes, this assumes that I want to keep things in my, link, in my array in the same order that they're put in, right? Which is kind of normally typical for an array. When you add something to the beginning of the array, you expect that if you add five things to the beginning, you expect if you take five things out, they'll be in the same order. But you could also have an unordered array 
where you don't actually care about the order of elements in the array, if you're just using it, for example, for storage, in which case you can game the system. So now if I want to add something to the beginning of an unordered array, what I can do is take my 5, move my 5 from the beginning to the end, and add whatever I wanted to add at the beginning. I can take my 5 and put it at the end and add whatever I wanted to add at the beginning. If I do that, remember adding to the end is constant time. And so this operation is constant time. The problem is that it loses the order of elements in the array because if I take away something, I move my 5 back, and then um, maybe I'll take some, I'll add three things, and we'll move things around. And so you're never sure exactly the order of elements in the array. So if you're using an array for a stack and a queue, you can't use this shortcut that makes adding to the beginning of an array constant time. And so you're stuck with big O of n time for operating on the beginning and end of an array. So if we're going to implement a stack using an array, how are we going to do it? We're going to use the end of the array. We're going to do add, last, remove, last. Okay. And this is going to be constant time. If we do add first, remove first, the add, sorry, both of those are big O of n, right? So our complexity is going to be horrible. So we want to do add last, remove last. What about if we're doing a queue? How are we going to implement a queue using an array? So we could do add last, remove first. So if we do that, our add last has complexity big O of 1, and our remove first has complexity big O of n. Crap. We don't want to do that. I know. What we'll do is instead of doing that, we'll do add first, remove last. Okay? Because our remove last has complexity big O of 1, and our add first... Oh. So you can't implement a stack and a queue using a standard array. So you can't implement a queue using a standard array that does not involve big O of n complexity for one of the operations. Okay. Is that a question? Yeah. Very good. So the question was, let's move the head around. Like this. No, just kidding. Okay. So, this is, that's why I said standard array. That's why I added a caveat and said this is for a standard array. So, let's take a little look at a different kind of array, a different kind of data structure that allows us to solve this problem. So if you've ever used one of the um, higher level languages, let's say, like Perl or Python, in those languages, you don't have to declare arrays. And you can have guaranteed constant time adding and removing at both ends of the array. And the way they do that is they cheat. They create an array. They create an array. And instead of saying, this is the beginning of the array, and this is the uh, end of the array, like you might expect, 
they say this is the beginning of the array. And in fact, right now, because it's empty, that's also the end of the array. And so if I add something, let's say I'm adding to the end of the array, it doesn't matter right now because of the array is empty. But let's put a few things in the array. That's the beginning. Here's the end. And so if I want to add something, I can just add to the end. And if my tail pointer, when I try and update it, if my index, when I try and update it, is larger than the size of the array, I just wrap it around and say, you know what, here's the end of the array. Okay. Similarly, similarly, if I add to the beginning of the array, then I'm not adding at position 0, I'm adding at position 10 or 20, depending on how big the array is and what I'm going to use it for. And I just decrement the value of the index that I'm remembering for my beginning of my array and say, you know what, it's just gone down by 1. And I can keep doing that. So as I add to the beginning of the array, then I decrement my index, I move my pointer, so that I remember that it's gone down by one. As I add more stuff to the beginning of the array, I change my index. And then when I get to the point where my beginning of my array is at position zero, traditionally position zero, and you think, okay, the array is full, now I have to move everything over. No. If I want to add something, that's fine. I just add something to the beginning of the array. Okay. So these types of arrays are called circular data structures. Because you can go around in circles in them. And what you may have noticed is that when the array is full, tail and head point to the same place. And when the array is empty, tail and head point to the same place. They have the same index. And so how do you know when the array, whether the array is full or whether the array is empty in constant time? You just don't use the index, you just use a size counter and count the number of things in your array. And if the, the number of things in your array is the same as the number of buckets, your array is full. Right? This is easy to do. You just basically do mod on the index of head, and head or tail. You mod it on the size of the table, and you're off to the races. So this is a way to guarantee constant time adding and removing in arrays. Um, obviously, there's an additional overhead in here. Obviously, you have to have um, an array that's much larger than you need to provide for that. But that's how data struct, um, excuse me, that's how languages like Perl and Python will typically handle uh, arrays so that you can do pushing and popping in constant time. So the key thing to remember about arrays is adding and removing from the beginning of an array is big O of n. And adding and removing from the end of a linked list is big O of n, unless, of course, you have a tail pointer. But there's also some fundamental differences between arrays and linked lists. So if we look at arrays versus linked lists, there's some good and bad about both. Arrays are typically faster. 
So I tested some code where I added a million things to an array and a million things to a linked list, and I did that several times. The linked list is typically about 10x slower, depending on exactly the implementation that you use than the array. In my test case, it was about 300 milliseconds to add a million things to the linked list, and about 20 milliseconds to add things to the array. So the arrays are typically faster, and they typically require less memory because for the linked list, you have to have that memory set aside for the next pointer, right? And so you don't only use the memory for the data, you use the memory for the next pointer. And depending on what you're doing, then that may be an issue. Um, but arrays are also a fixed size. And so the way that you get around that is that as the array fills up, you have to double the size of the array and copy everything over. When it fills up, you double the size of the array and copy everything over. And so if you don't initiate your array as an appropriate size and you're um, growing things rapidly, you're adding things rapidly to your array, then rapid growth is expensive yeah, because you have to keep doing all of that copying and moving over. And so if you don't set up your array initially appropriately, it can actually become slower than using a linked list. So linked lists, the biggest advantage of a linked list is that they have unlimited capacity. Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many things you put in it until you run out of memory. But the main disadvantages are the slower and the extra memory that are required. <coughs>